I am in a certain situation. Uh, so am I. I'm in a certain situation in English. And I'm in a certain situation in Czech. Same situation? Yeah, pretty much. But as Czech speakers and English speakers, we say it in different ways. In this video, we'll put some Czech and English idioms to the test. Which ones can you guess? And who do you think has a stranger way of expressing themselves? Czech speakers or English speakers? Before we answer that question, and before we figure out what situation these two are in, I'm going to tell you where I learn all of my Czech idioms, and that's italki. Italki is not some automated AI app. It's a marketplace where I go to find real native speaking language teachers, whom I can speak to whenever I want. Here are some of my favorite idioms about italki. Having a native speaker to answer your language learning questions is worth its weight in gold. That means it's really valuable. Italki's one-on-one -on -one lessons suit my individual needs, so I don't waste time having to look up answers in textbooks and on the internet. Italki is the language learning solution that won't break the bank. That means it's totally affordable. There's no contract, no subscription fees. You simply pay as you go. Signing up for Italki is a piece of cake. That means it's super easy. Simply peruse the marketplace, select a teacher, purchase italki credits, and sign up for a lesson. If you're a new italki user, let me make things even easier for you. Click the link in my description box below, buy 10 euros worth of italki credits, enter DREAM2023, that's my code, and it's valid until the 31st of December, and bam, you get five euros off. You can actually buy a language lesson for that with a qualified native speaker. You know what we English speakers say, a penny saved is a penny earned. With my discount, that's 500 pennies earned. So what are you waiting for? You can improve your language learning skills with italki. And when you do, you help me make these videos and keep teaching you more Czech and English idioms. So thank you. As an immigrant to Czechia, I've spent a considerable amount of time in Czech pubs. After sipping a few pints in any Czech pub and talking to the locals, you're bound to get someone doing this to you. In the US, this can happen to you too, but it looks more like this, or sometimes this. If someone does one of these things to you, are they A, offering you a ride in their car, B, teasing you by telling you something untrue, C, stealing money from you. If you guessed B, you'd be right. In English, when someone is lying to us, as a joke, we say they're yanking our chain or pulling our leg. The Czechs say, taha tje za nos, or someone is pulling your nose. This one happened to me the other day. I had to miss my Czech class and my meeting with some Americans later that day. I told the Czechs the reason for my absence was this one. And I told the Americans my reason for my absence was this. So what do you think happened to me that day? Was it A, I was moving to a new flat? B, I developed the symptoms of a cold? C, I was cleaning my cellar and discovered some unwelcome roommates. Do they even have exterminators in the Czech Republic? I feel like the EU might have a rule against that. So fun culture shock story, an American friend of mine had an infestation of ants at his house here in Prague, and he called the ant specialist, and the ant specialist had to move the ants, not spray them with radioactive life extinguishing chemicals like we do in America, but rather help the ants to find a better zip code. Okay, back to the creepy crawlies. If you guessed B, you'd be correct. Czechs say něco na mě leze, or something is crawling on me when they get the symptoms of a cold. It kind of makes sense, right? Those icky symptoms are kind of like creatures crawling all over your body. 
while English speakers say, I'm coming down with something. Not quite as nightmare-inducing as the Czech idiom. Now, Czechs are very talented sportsmen and women. They're known for track and field, tennis, snowboarding and skiing, and, of course, ice hockey. But I don't know that they are particularly flexible people. So when they tell someone to do this, I'm left wondering what on earth they're talking about. In English, we tell someone to do this a little differently. Do these odd idioms mean A, run, run, run away, B, take off your cleats and quit the game, or C, put the ball in the net, you absolute <clears throat> Oh, sorry, I've been procrasto watching Ted Lasso all week. If you guessed A, you'd be right. Zit nohi na ramena, or take your feet on your shoulders, means to run away as quickly as possible. Though for obvious reasons, I don't know if this is the most efficient way to do that. In English, we'd say, hightail it. Like a little furry animal with a tail that goes right up in the air before he runs away. Get it? Pshoo! When you first move to Czechia as a foreigner, you can feel a little like this. And Czechs understand this feeling, but to them, it feels more like this. Same feeling, but apparently different locations. Do these idioms mean, A, the local food looks good, but I'm hesitant to eat it. B, this city has great vistas. C, I don't understand anything here at all. If you guessed C, you'd be right. When English speakers are confused to the point that we don't understand anything, we say, it's all Greek to me. Interestingly, Greece is not as confusing to the Czechs, but when they are confused, they say that something is a Spanish village. It looks like those Spanish streets are a little hard to navigate, so I get it. Czechs have a reputation for many things. Like I mentioned, they're very sporty. They are known to have a wicked sense of humor, and they are very good with their hands. So when they say this about someone, I'm not sure what to make of it. In English, we have a similar idiom, but we say this about someone. Do these idioms mean A, he's clumsy and useless, B, he drives like an Englishman on the wrong side of the road, or C, he puts his shoes on the wrong feet? So I've never actually left the house with my shoes on the wrong feet, but I did once go all the way to the center of Prague down Wenceslas Square, into Old Town Square, past the Christmas markets, past probably thousands of people, and not until I got into the dressing room of a clothing store did I realize that I had two different color sneakers on. So, are these idioms about me? Thankfully, no. But if you guessed A, you'd be right. Ma opie ruce leve, or he has both hands left, means someone is clumsy and useless. In English, we have a similar saying, He's all thumbs, or I'm all thumbs. It means I'm uncoordinated and I'm not good at something. Although I'd say that our thumb is maybe our most useful finger, so maybe having all thumbs would make us super useful? I don't know, maybe not. This one, I just, I don't know what to say about this one. Also, it's kind of hard to portray visually. So here we have a hairy blanket. Clearly, as a long-haired woman and a dog owner, I have many hairy blankets. Any guesses? Here's our English version of the same idiom. Do these idioms mean A, you need to vacuum your home, B, it's taking you a really long time to say what you want to say, or C, you have one too many pets? Did you guess B? Then you're correct. Leze to tebe jako chupate deki, or literally, it is crawling from you like a hairy blanket, means that it's taking you a really long time to say what you want to say. The Czech idiom is like, I mean, that can't be real, right? Are you pulling my nose, Czechs? In English, we say a cat's got your tongue, which is clearly why you can't speak. If you're Czech and can give us 
any enlightenment on the origin of this weird Czech idiom, please write it in the comments below. Now, I hope that these Czech and English idioms are as clear as a slap for you. Oh, and I forgot the first one. May you never find yourself in this situation when visiting the Czech Republic. Do these idioms mean A, in a Czech pub without your wallet, B, in a Czech castle without your pants on, unless you're Czech, that probably won't happen to you, or C, in a difficult situation. If you guessed C, you'd be right. May you never find yourself breji, or in the rice, or in a pickle, when you come to visit this beautiful country. Uvidíme se příště. Ahoj.